virtualized environments and business needs are changing at all times. And it's important to ensure that our backup strategy mimics and reflects those changes. Veeam Backup and Replication makes it easy to manage those adjustments like repositories, scheduling, and the scope in which we back up VMs. Let's take a closer look into the console and explore some of those various options. Now inside of our lab here, we have a series of backup jobs, sure backup, and replication jobs. Let's take a look at editing a current backup job. So here you'll notice if I right click on a Veeam Backup job, I have the ability to edit, amongst other feature sets here, as well as a series of ribbons that populate at the top of the screen, making it easy to get into those edits. When I hit edit, you'll notice it populates the same wizard that we used when we initially created the backup job. Of course, there's a name, and if that need changes and the name needs changed, we can do that as well. Now with the Virtual Machines tab, here we have three VMs being backed up, and it works well. But if I want to change the scope or add VMs that are being backed up, all I have to do is hit Add and make those necessary adjustments. A good example of a scope is maybe adding at the host or cluster level or leveraging VMware tags. So as these items change, well, naturally the backup job will change. And that's one less thing you'll have to babysit on a day-to-day -day basis. So once we make those elections, we can proceed through the storage where we can then elect our retention policy or amount of restore points we want to keep on disk. Now by default it is 14, scheduling at the bottom being taken daily, so that grants us two weeks worth of backups. Bear in mind that the scheduling and the restore points to keep on disk do work in concert together. So if I go into scheduling, change it to every 12 hours, well with this 14 remaining the same, that gives us one week's worth of backups. If we go into advanced, some quick topics here are things like the, the backup mode. By default, it is a forward incremental backup process. On that first run, naturally capturing a full backup, but each sequential run will just be the changes that have occurred since the previous. And also by default, we're going to capture a more periodic full on a weekly basis by leveraging a synthetic full. What's great is this doesn't have the impact on that production environment because it's leveraging the data that's already been captured with those previous backup jobs. Now the inverse of that is the active full. That goes out to production and captures a full backup just like we did the first run of the job. Now in the maintenance tab, we can take advantage of a storage level corruption guard where periodically we'll go down into the repository and check the health state of that backup chain. If we detect any type of corruption, we'll go out to production and grab healthy blocks and inject them back into that chain. And of course, there's also storage considerations, things like compression levels, storage optimization by block level, and even encryption where we can enable it for in-flight and at rest AES 256-bit encryption. Now with notifications, this gives us the ability to push out notifications with this specific job to specific people, with different types of notifications. Again, this being specific to this job, keep in mind that there is a global setting or a general options here that allows us to create notifications uh, at a global sense for all backup jobs. vSphere integrate well with the VM VMware tool quiescence as well as VMware's change block tracking. And even things like integration, where if we have one of the production SANs, many of them in which we integrate well with, we can leverage them as the source for those backups. Even coming in and failing over to a standard backup in the event that we can't communicate with that production SAN. And of course, scripting as well. If you'd like to drop in some scripts, we have some job scripting abilities here as well, and it's a good place to do so. You can also save as default. These defaults are well, it's matched by best practices by many in the industry, but if you find a, a template, if you will, that works well for your needs, it's a great button there. Save it as a default for future use. And guest processing, this is phenomenal. So guest processing gives us the ability to get those nice application consistent backups. Checking this box will ensure that those applications are properly quiesced before we capture that data, and that does a couple of different things. Of course, a naturally nice, clean backup of the application, but it also unlocks one of my favorite restore types of being able to use our Veeam Explorers to dive into those backup files and recover application items without the need of rehydrating the entire backup file. This is phenomenal. 
and of course, guest file system indexing. There's a web-based application known as Veeam Enterprise Manager that is responsible for a few different things. One is federating multiple Veeam backup servers into a single pane of glass, but this also allows us to search the environment for all file types across all environments. This is very powerful for larger uh, deployments. And as mentioned before, scheduling. So if I go into my scheduling, this is where I can make those changes. And by default, it is every day, but I can go down and say every other day or certain days of the week. Or I can go through and do monthly if need be, or even periodically and get very aggressive and start backing up those VMs at a higher clip. So every eight hours and even chaining the job. If I have one job that finishes, I can ensure that this job will kick off once that other job is complete. Now with the automatic retry, we'll go ahead and attempt to retry those backups if we encounter an issue. And then of course you can determine the amount of time for that window to pass before we attempt that, uh, that backup again. Now once we've made these adjustments, simply hit the finish or apply button and now those settings are in place and we'll adhere to those the next run of the job. Now that takes us through the edit of a backup job. Join us next time where we look at managing repositories and capacity tiers. Thanks everybody. Have a great day.